Welcome back to Marvel Maniac, an MCU after show. This is Eric Cicada, your host, a.k.a. Mr. Honest. We are here for the season finale of The Falcon, or shall I say, Captain America and The Winter Soldier. Wow. Uh, what a finale. I was very impressed really enjoyed this finale i don't know about you um i thought it was action-packed i thought it was fantastic i thought this uh 52 minutes had a lot more in it um it felt like a lot longer than 52 minutes for me um i don't know what about you did you think that it was too short did you wish it was a little bit longer did it pack the punch did it give you was there a falcon punch uh, that's Super Smash Brothers reference. It's not a Marvel reference. Um, it's season finale time. Let's do this. Now, while it is season finale for The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it is not the season finale for Marvel Maniac. Uh, we do have an after after show we're going to be doing next week, week from today. Um, I'm going to be having my friends returning Dustin Baker and Terrence TJ Galuli, and we're going to be talking about the season as a whole and in our afterthoughts. But let's break down this episode beat to beat, starting right now from the very beginning. We start with Carly, hood up, addressing her followers, saying, The movement is ready. They're not going to stop, not unless we make them. It's time. The classic Carly at this point, right, guys? Like, we've heard this from Carly. She's not going to stop. <laughs> that's pretty much basically every... That's pretty much like what she's been saying this whole time. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Like, we weren't wasting any time this episode. <laughs> um, I'm... Ba that's like pretty much what I was expecting, though. I knew we were going to get right to it. I was pretty much thinking most of this episode was going to be centered around like one night um i have to say this from the beginning of this episode was like the most invested um in terms of like being a pod a podcaster you know reviewer um and excited i've been yet like i'm not like not like i haven't been but like and that's saying a lot because like i don't know like I'm a big Marvel fan, so I, 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 I made me kind of maniac podcast about it. Um, so I'm sitting here, jaw jaw dropped uh, at this entrance, obviously of the, of the new Captain America. And I'm forgetting to take notes and stuff, so I'm obviously watching and the rewinding and going to take my notes because I'm just loving every minute of this. Um, it's amazing. It's captivating. Wonderful. Um, so. The NYPD is surrounding. We're Spider Man. <laughs> we're the, we're Spidey. <laughs> there was an announcement today about like Disney Plus and Sony making some arrangement. I'm thinking maybe in the back of my mind, are they? Would they? Would they dare <laughs> uh, bring Spidey in this? Uh, <laughs> Uh, the New York police, the New York Police Department is surrounding the GRC building. Um, a winged figure soars over the East River towards Manhattan. That's directly from the um, audio description. Sometimes I'll take those. If if any of you listen to audio description, I, I bet you're like, oh, he took that right from the audio description. <laughs> you can uh, call me out on that. Okay, um, he's still got the wings. I'm, I'm very happy about that. There was me and me and me and TJ were wondering maybe he won't take the wings, you know, and maybe he'll just like don just cap. But of course, if he knows how to fly, why wouldn't he take those those wings? And if, I mean, if I'm wrong, am I wrong? It's all vibranium. It, it can't. It, the, if it's Wakanda, I mean, it's it's all vibranium. Sam radios Bucky who's arriving on the scene. Sam said he called in some backup. Oh, little does Sam know, though. He does not know his backup is, like, so, so compromised. Ugh, we... Spoiler alert, but not really, because, like, we all just got through this, and you know, like, if you're listening to this, you got through the episode. Sharon Carter, um, it's a man, but it's actually Sharon Carter. Like... Kind of high tech disguise. Um, it was. I was so suspicious of. Karen, look, this is my note. I was so suspicious of Sharon Carter last episode. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> well, past Eric, you're in for a treat. <laughs> I mean, the whole season, I was pretty suspicious of her, and I was right. Sam flies overhead like 
oh, Carly is seeing him and she's getting a little worried. Um, she notifies the others, do it now. Mass Flash Smashers in the GRC meeting um, enter and uh, one guy rolls the silver ball across the floor, releasing the gas and everyone flees, making everyone flee. And that's what that's what Carly wants. She uh, wants them to get into these um, like riot van things where she's going to like pretty much get the hostages, the the console people, the representatives. Uh, Sam arrives on this on the scene. Captain America slamming through the window with his shield the vibranium shield through the window um he he knocks it into a flag smasher um that's approaching one of some of the innocents he's donning his new epic suit silver star in the center this is a great new take on the suit i wasn't sure what it was going to be and I, you know, every you see in a lot of YouTube clickbait videos, you wonder if any of them are like actually leaks. And so many of them look just so bad. So I'm like, I got my expectations. Man, I just were, were low only because like I've seen so many bad renditions and so many bad YouTube thumbnails. Um, so I mean, that's not Marvel's MCU's fault. Mar- MCU knocked it out as always. Love the suit. What do you guys think of the suit? Um, Marvel Maniac Pod at Gmail dot com. We're at Marvel Maniac Pod on Twitter. Give us a shout out. Let, let us know what you think. Um, Sharon says no one is coming uh, toward the building. Um, and Captain America points out that Carly's not coming and she's um, trying to force everybody out. Um, Sam gets kicked in a meeting room by the big bad who Cap screwed over in episode one. I'm referring to him as Cap as often as I can. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot to say this part. Um, There's this one security officer who's like, I'm sorry, who are you? And he's like, I'm Captain America. And um, he's like, I thought Captain America was on the moon. <laughs> nice reference, right? Yeah, so Sam gets kicked into uh, a meeting room by um, his enemy from the first episode um, that, of that terrorist group that he was fighting, um, those big nasties. I can't think of the name. I had it in the last episode, and I can't, just can't think of the name for the life of me. Um, he says, you cost me a lot of money, and I wonder how much that uh, I can get for that new bird costume. Uh, Sam says, maybe a, a baguette, a few french fries. You know, he's throwing some banter. He's trying to get him angry. Um, and he says something in his language. A robe doesn't make a monk. And the two exchange some fierce blows. We get a lot of action in this episode. We get some Marvel uh, cinematic finales here. You know, we get some of the best. <laughs> um, Carly lets Lennox. Uh, we get a little subplot here with this guy named Lennox. <laughs> He's very, very small character, but he does get some um, action here, <laughs> as we see very quickly. Um, she <laughs> she lets she lets Lennox know they're heading down the east stairwell. Uh, we get we, we see a security guard who appears to be compromised, escorting the hostages. Uh, a woman hands Bucky a phone, and Car uh, and Carly's on it, and she asks him if he's fighting for the right side. For, for some reason, for one second, I thought Carly was going to have like the Winter Soldier activation codes. Carly says that it doesn't matter if she doesn't survive this, and that she's fighting for something bigger than herself. Uh, Bucky counters that uh, all he's ever done is tried to do that, and he's failed twice. Uh, Lennox knocks... Not Knox. He locks the hostages in an armored truck with this very special looking lock, very tough looking lock. Um, it's very mechanical looking. Cap and the big meanie are still going at it, and the giant man. Uh, this giant man can move. He like he's got a lot of moves. Um, Cap gets knocked on his back by a flurry of kicks, and then Bucky tries to convince uh, Carly not to go down this path another time. He's even taking some of Sam's, um, you know, some of some of Sam's tricks in the book. You know, he's trying to convince her to the light side. She thanks him and realizes that she's been distracting him. <laughs> Lennox says that the hostages will arrive in about six minutes. Bucky rushes to a motorcycle 
and Sharon runs into Lennox, throwing a device onto his hand. This is very quick. Quick Lennox. Lennox's story is going in and out the door here. Poor Lennox. Uh, Lennox gets completely vaporized, like zapped. Uh, Sharon tells Sam that the chopper is about to take off. Now we're about to get a sick uh, Falcon sequence. Now this is like. A, like we really i don't know I, I don't mean it keeps saying i'm really trying to refer to him as cap from now on it's very tough um so I'm, i have my in my nose as cap as often as possible meanwhile cap captain america bounces the shield back off his opponent until he flips it into his face fires his thrust his thrusters throws his shield out the window and flies out after to catch it sick sick awesome 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 sauce amazing 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 oh my awesome <laughs> the chopper goes down once they notice um you know uh cap is chasing them the chopper goes into a full dive and cap shoots straight down after it sick <laughs> i'm gonna stop saying that uh the chopper swoops down lower uh low over the river then cap sends out a new and improved red wing to scan it uh, Carly tells the Smashers that they'll kill the hostages. Worst case scenario. And if they die, it doesn't matter at this point. The movement is strong enough to continue on without them. Uh, one world, one people. And then, yeah, you kind of get some of like this, like, <laughs> like awkwardness among the crew. But she like, like kind of like still rallies them weirdly a little and like gets them on her side still. Even at the very end, her followers still stick with her apprehensively, but they still stick with her. It's kind of amazing. Cap follows uh, the helicopter under a bridge, and a police chopper uh, like bumps into it and like goes spiraling out of control. So Sam epically goes after it and manages like to get Red Wing to help. Um, he wraps like he the pilot falls out of. The, the plane like cap wraps his arms around him saving him from the wreckage and red wing saves the co-pilot with his cable crowd cheers there's so many awesome moments being caught um of cap uh sam is cap and like it's just being proven to the world he is the true captain america <laughs> and i couldn't agree more he's the captain america right? the world needs Carly puts barricades in front of the armored trucks and then attempts to tackle them over, uh, basically, until Bucky arrives and tackles the big flag smasher guy. I think he's, like, Australian or something. Um, Carly said... That's the, the only way I could describe him, uh, this big, big guy. Uh, the Car Carly sets them on fire to get Bucky distracted. Um, she's crazy. <laughs> and then we hear it. Morgenthau, John Walker arrives in his Captain America outfit. weren't sure what he looked like. He looked pretty normal um, at first glance. He says, "Let's finish this." And she goes back. She says, "I don't. I didn't mean to kill your friend. Um, I don't want to hurt people that don't matter." Now that triggered him. He says, "You didn't think Lamar's life mattered?" And uh, she said not to my fight i just want the people on that truck john hurls his fake shield at carly and she kicks it flat in the streets uh she kind of laughs like we do which makes me feel feel for john um he put his war medals in there like he lost his friend and he believes he's captain america and he believes he deserved to be uh, and i don't know he gets rushed and he begins like he just begins to fight he fights his heart out and uh bucky like it just hammers at the door of the truck and uh yanks it open um carly punches and dents john's shield and he falls to the ground and focuses on his military metal under his shield while he's getting pummeled by like what looks like to be 30 guys <laughs> no it was probably like five guys <laughs> but like you know what i mean like he was getting pummeled and uh it's it's scary I, I honestly they make you really care about they really do make you care about john walker they do a very good job of it um the big guy goes for uh 
the, the big guy, the bigger, you know, Australian guy. I keep calling him that. I don't know if he is. I don't, I'd hate to just assume that, but, um, uh, he goes for John, like, with this big piece of cement, basically, and uh, Bucky swoops in to save him. Good to see. Um, I like the team up after the fight. Uh, Carly goes at Bucky with a par- uh, parking meter, and then Bucky falls several stories, and the big flash, that same big flash mastery follows him down. Meanwhile, Cap flies next to the helicopter, and he... He's getting shot at by the um, pilot. Uh, he contacts a woman on the plane via text, and he uh, tells says to answer her phone, and he kn- says, I heard you know how to fly a helicopter, and he validates that. Uh, the, sm- the chopper smashes Cap uh, into a barge, making it look like he's going to drown. Like, honestly, anxiety. I didn't want him to drown. And uh, But come on, we know he's going to be okay. Come on. Uh, <laughs> it's just only midpoint through the episode. It's not like he can die. It would be insane if he did. Um, <laughs> that would be terrible. He has a new pilot countdown for him to do this sick move really fast where he throws his shield into the plane and gives her the opportunity to take over while kind of taking out the pilots. I don't know. It was very insane. Uh, we cut back to John in the street. Okay. And he is like getting up from like the last bout and he stands up to tr- to two crew members and he beats one of them up uh, and then another one of them up. And then he finds Carly, and he has an extremely awesome fight with Carly. He he headbutts her, and uh, he really uses his shield like until he can't really even use it anymore. It's really really awesome. Um, I'm I'm happy to see John actually fight the person who was responsible for uh, Battlestar's death, and you know he he really was fighting with his heart here, and I, I appreciated the fight in John today. I really did. Carly knocks John down and runs to the armored truck with the hostages. And uh, she puts it over, like, knocks it over to the construction site. Like, tries to knock it str- knock it over. Um, it's right where Bucky is fighting. Nobody can save the hostages at this moment now. But John has, like, the perfect opportunity to save the hostages. Or you can catch Carly, like, and kind of take her off guard. Um who he has like a lust for revenge right now um he chooses to be the hero he chooses to be a hero and this is where i don't know he's getting some redemption here right a little bit can he be redeemed i'd say so he gets tackled by um smashers and falls to the ground so he takes a pretty big fall there too oh my gosh even after that attempt, the truck still begins to fall. But then we we cut down. The truck isn't falling, even though it looks like it was going to fall again. It was cat. Uh, Sam Wilson, ladies and gentlemen, he is holding the truck up with two small drones. Like, he's got multiple little wet red wings, mini wings. Uh, <laughs> that's the Black Falcon right there. And then uh, somebody, that's a pedestrian. Pedestrian, too, says, no, that's Captain America. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Red Wing frees the hostages. Uh, Carly throws a metal rod at Bucky like a freaking spear. <laughs> uh, the shield knocks down almost every flag smasher uh, after that. Sam throws it. Um, you, of all people, bought into that bullshit. Carly says, I'm trying something different. Maybe you should do the same, said Sam. It's a good point. Try something different, Carly. All of a sudden, smoke bombs uh, show up and nobody can see anything. Um, but Sam and his do- and his goggles. Captain America has got these awesome goggles. Cap and Bucky uh, and John, the unlikely trio. We get a sneaky, quiet scene where Carly is walking through hallways, very scared. Carly's breaking down in here a bit. Um, She runs into Sharon. Now, this is a very revealing scene here. This is the moment, um, the reveal for Sharon Carter. Carly says, I'm disappointed in you, Sharon. Uh, 
that's what Sharon was going to say. And she says, Carly reminded her of a young her. She took her in and she gave Carly an opportunity until she betrayed her. Uh, because you wanted to control a world that hurt you. Without us super soldiers, how much power does the power broker really have? Sharon says more than you. Then the big meanie, the uh, Falcon, I mean, sorry, Cat was fighting in the beginning, comes out. And <laughs> Sharon uh, reveals, is revealed as the power broker. He just outs her. Um, this causes tension. And he threatens to out her, like to the world, as the power broker if he doesn't, if she doesn't pay him more. Uh, Sharon shoots him, and Carly shoots Sharon. Right at this moment, Captain America arrives, asking Carly where it ends. He tackles Carly, and she throws a cinder block, but it explodes on the shield. She hits the shield and plummets his, uh, he plummets his wings in the ground so she can't push him. Amazing visuals. Uh, invas- amaz- just amazing visuals all around, but in the fights in this episode, especially amazing. Um, mercy bears richer fruit than uh, strict justice. Uh, this is Bucky uh, and John. They catch the rest of the Flag Smashers. Carly is laying into the shield, screaming at Sam uh, to fight back. She gets the shield out of his hand and uh, holds a gun to him. Like She's not holding the shield. She just rips it out of his hand. And she's about to fire until Sharon shoots her. Sharon gets her. Um, Sam sits with Carly in her final moments. I figured in her final moments she would out uh, out Sharon as the power broker. Um, but I just don't know. Maybe she wouldn't has a code. I don't know. Um, Sam sits with Carly in her final moments. She tells him she is sorry. Um, very sad. But nah, sad. She was very off the ho- off the hook. I mean, I mean, off the wire. Crazy. I don't know. Sam approaches the representatives. Okay, so this is basically Sam having had saved the day at this point in the story, right? Right? Um, he kicked some butt. He, he, did, he did it right. Right? Uh, but not really. He still needs to tackle, like, these other issues. Like, the whole reason, like, a lot of these conflicts arose uh, with the Flag Smashers and everything. So, the government isn't even noticing. Sam asked the representatives if they're going forward with the uh, resetting the borders, and uh, the, they say, our peacekeeping troops will begin relocating the people soon. The terrorists only set us back a bit. Sam says, you have to stop calling them terrorists. Uh, people who uh, reappeared to find someone else living in their family home, would they end up homeless? Uh, you have no idea how complicated this situation is. Uh, Sam says, you know what? You're right. This is just the, like, like Sam's just trying to like be like the normal man to these people and like explain to them like how it is for people actually. Um, I appreciate that. I really do. Um, <laughs> I do personally, even though he's not like actually standing up for me. I just appreciate that in the writing. <laughs> No, I'm just going to go straight down the quote. You know what? You're right. And that's a good thing. We finally have a common struggle. Now, for once, all the, peop- all the people that have been, strugg- uh, been begging you for you to feel how hard any given day is, now you know. How did it feel to feel helpless? Now, if you can remember what it was like to be helpless and face a force so powerful it could erase half a planet you would know that you're about to have the exact same impact. This isn't about any... This isn't about easy decisions, Senator. And then the Senator says, you just don't understand. And that's not the right thing to say. (laughs) He says, I'm a black man carrying the stars and stripes. What don't I understand? Every time I pick this thing up, I know that there are millions of people who are going to hate me for it. John reacts to this like, look, like, uh, and and so does Isaiah. Um, And he looks, Isaiah looks very taken aback. Even now, uh, here, I can feel it. The stairs. Uh, the judgment and there's nothing I can do to change it and I'm still here no super serum no blonde hair or blue eyes the only power I have is that I believe we can do better we can't demand that people step up if we don't meet uh, um, meet them halfway 
you control the banks. You can move the borders. You can knock down a forest with an email. You can feed a million people with a phone call. The question is, who's in the room with you when you're making those decisions? Is it the people you're going to impact, or is it the people who... Uh, more like you are more like you Torres and Sarah will also watch Uh, this girl died trying to stop you and no one has stopped for one second to ask why you've got to do better senator you've got to step up because if you don't the next Carly will and don't like and you do not want to see 2.0 and that's a great point Sam People believed in her cause so much that they helped her defy the strongest governments in the world. Why do you think that is? You people have uh, as much power as an insane god or a misguided teenager. The question you have to ask yourself is, how are you going to use it? That speech was so powerful. I mean, I wasn't delivering it. I was more or less like, just I had to like say every word because it was like the crux of the show and it, and it really brought so much together. Um, and it's really like what Sam's going to kind of like fighting up against and this mantra and these morals up against this whole show and like the reason he didn't pick up the shield and everything that's kind of been building up in him and uh, against him. And I don't know, it all just kind of made sense. Uh, I appreciate that speech. It really brought a lot together. Um, Bucky says, nice job, Cap. Little, little funny banter. And then they go to Sharon, a.k.a. the power broker. <laughs> Don't forget. She says she's sorry for how things ended and that the suit looks good on him. I mean, after that long speech, there's such short words and... Uh, it's just about the suit. Cap goes. <laughs> I just. I'm just. I just can't believe Sharon. I feel so betrayed, Sharon. Uh, Cap goes to the Hudson uh, to take out the final flag smasher. A little extra superhero reaction for him. We see. Um, <laughs> we see. Uh, so, so, so a few flag. The rest of the flag smashers get into a caravan, and um, we get a one. Uh, we get a good one world, one people. Uh, from the na- like from a navy guy, and um, they were gonna get away. It seems like, but Zemo's butler bombed them. <laughs> Cut to Zemo hearing about the news of it, and he's kicking his feet up. He seems pretty happy, believe it or not. We will. See- it's the raft, isn't that right outside of New York? Um, I have I played the Spider Man PlayStation games, and like that's where the raft was was outside of New York. Uh, I should know more about comics. Don't hate on me for it. Uh, good friend guy gave me the Marvel Encyclopedia. Let's just look up the raft right after this. That's what I'll do. <laughs> and then I'll know. Um, but yeah, we got a little cameo from Zemo, and uh, he killed some of the Flag Smashers. So good on Zemo, I guess. More killing. Great. <laughs> cut, but I don't know. They might have killed more people, so it is probably good. Um, cut back to Val and John's wife. Yes, yes. We are back with Julia Louise Dreyfus. Um, John walks out in a new black and red, white stripe. I mean, black, red, and white Captain America uniform. But it's not a Captain America uniform. Val gives him the name U.S. Agent. I love it. Um, I've heard little bits and bits about U.S. Agent on the YouTubes. (laughs) And uh, he is an actual comic book character. So time to look him up in the Marvel Encyclopedia as well. In Brooklyn, uh, Bucky visits Yuri. And he straight up says, I have to tell you something about your son. He was murdered by the Winter Soldier. And that was me. And Yuri looked shocked and he asked him why. And he said, I didn't have a choice. Bucky leaves and um, we cut to his therapist's office and she he leaves him a gift and it's the book uh, with all the names crossed off in it. Um, he leaves it for her and it's kind of a sweet moment. And then we see him walking by on the sidewalk um, and he peeks in on Yuri and he looks happy. And I think like Bucky finds resolve with that. Um, back in Baltimore, Sam visits Isaiah and he, Isaiah says, I saw you, what you did out there. I heard the GRC was standing down on those plans of theirs. You must have done something right. Uh, I ain't gonna lie. You're special. Ah, approval. Nothing like approval. <laughs> that's so, that's amazing. So a black Captain America, huh? And he says, Sam says, damn right. Uh, Sam says he wants to show Isaiah something. 
Um, okay, so he takes him to the Captain America exhibit. You know, the fact that at least Isaiah went at all this time is a big deal. Um, I can't believe he got him to go. Like, there's an exhibit there for him now. Sam is amazing. That Captain America right there is amazing. <laughs> uh so it's just a beautiful walk through this monument. But like when Isaiah sees the statue, it's just this performance by this actor um, is so good, and my mind was just I'm, I, it pulled at my heartstrings. I I I was I was a little emotional. <laughs> it was beautiful, um, and yeah. Uh, Sam says now they'll never forget what you did for this country. Uh, it'll always be there. I love it. Um, I bring, Isaiah brings Sam in for one big hug. I mean, I'm not saying one, but like gives him a really big old hug. Maybe they've had they'll have off screen hugs. <laughs> uh, we get to see a celebration on the docks, and it is just a happy celebration. Um, kids are jumping off uh, Bucky's arm, like hanging off it. Uh, Sam is posing for photos. Uh, memories are are being made you know um it's just a good time and it's just just like the show it's just a good freaking time um and we get to see one last shot of um bucky and sam on the docks just looking out at the horizon and they're the best friends and bucky puts his arm on sam's shoulder and that's it that's just the end of the show right False. There's a post credit scene. Are you gonna, have you watched it yet? So basically, in this post credit scene, Sharon Carter is getting a full pardon and an opening in her old division. Uh, this senator guy, he's really making some bad calls in this series, isn't he? Um, welcome home, Agent Carter. Good for good for Agent Carter. Um, the power broker is now in the government. Start lining up our buyers. Super soldiers might be off the menu, but we are about to have full access to government secrets, prototypes, weapons, you name it. Sharon Carter, you are unbelievable. So all together, <laughs> we got we we pretty much saved the day. But at the end of the day, like I don't know, Falcon kind of like. <laughs> Captain America did get like one of the worst, maybe a worst person in charge in the government. Um, not like I know he didn't mean to, and like he wouldn't have known anyway. She manipulated her way in, and like she's probably a worse, like it might be a worse that she's there overall, you know, technically, but we don't know. I don't know. We'll see where that goes. We'll see where that goes. Um, I, it's interesting to th it's interesting to think is this show going to have a second season? Is this show written for a second season? Um, it's my question. Um, I'm, I wonder what we're going to talk about on the after after show a week from a today. Um, we're going to be talking all about it. Um, and you know what? I want you to be excited because we are not done talking Marvel. Loki comes out June 11th, 2021. We will be covering that. Um, what If series comes out in 2021. Um, we have so much coming out. We have Black Widow coming out in July. There's just a lot to look forward to. And Marvel Maniac, we're going to cover every single MCU property as it comes out the night of. Because we aren't Marvel Maniacs here. Um, we are going to cut it here today. And we are going to break down the whole season. And we're going to reflect today and and just literally process everything and then i'm going to come back next week and we're going to talk about the whole season um you, i hope you guys enjoyed this week's finale of the falcon and the winter soldier um as much as i did it was a shorter episode so a shorter episode of falcon and winter soldier means a shorter episode of marvel maniac um but that doesn't shorter is sweeter and it doesn't always mean worse um you, it is always a pleasure having you here in marvel maniac and if you would ever be so generous and ever like to tip the show never necessary but if you would like to it's mr honest podcast at paypal tweet us marvel maniac pod on twitter email us marvel maniac pod at gmail.com and leave a comment and rate us on whatever app you're listening to it goes the furthest and longest way if you're just listening um 
on your way to work or whatever, uh, just throw a couple stars down for us. It will literally mean the world. Seriously, you guys are awesome. I see the listens. I see the subscribes. I see the love. Thank you for being here and listening. Um, We will see you next week, you maniacs, uh, for Marvel Maniac and MCU After Show. My name is Eric Cicada, a.k.a. Mr. Onyx. Until, Onyx, until next time, Avengers, disassemble.